Hi, this is Esther Regelson of the World Animal Awareness Society. I'm here on 9-11, 2010, four blocks south of the World Trade Center, and I'm on top of a parking deck at the Tribute of Light, where the Audubon Society is here monitoring birds who get caught in the light, and I'm speaking to a representative from Audubon. My name is John Roden. I'm the manager of citizen science for the New York City Audubon Society, and one of our uh, citizen science programs is called Project Safe Flight, where we try to understand how hazardous uh, the city is, the built environment in the city is for migratory birds. So that has to do with buildings, it has to do with light, um, and one of the aspects of it is every year on 9-11, there's a tribute in light here, and we monitor the light beams throughout the night for birds getting caught uh, in them. And if, in fact, birds do get caught in the lights, we will initiate a protocol where we will have the lights turned off so the birds can clear. Migratory birds that migrate at night use light to navigate by, whether it's starlight. They, they actually have the ability to read the star map or use the moon for navigation. So since light is such an important cue for them, if there's a certain set of circumstances where the birds come in and are drawn into the lights here, um, they may find themselves unable to get out of them. They get disoriented, they get confused, and they you can actually see the birds circling in the lights. And if that's the case, they'll just exhaust themselves and collapse to the ground. So in order to prevent that, that's why we monitor um, and can have the lights turned off if need be. At some point this evening, John Rowden of Audubon found a dead bird on the street below the Tribute in Light, and we looked at the bird and tried to identify what type of bird it was. It turned out from the coloring and the white bars on its wings that it was a pine warbler. We looked around, didn't find any more this evening. There were many times where there were literally hundreds of birds in the sky, most of them very small, probably warblers of some type. And about every hour, we determined that there were so many birds caught in the light that we were able to turn out the lights and let the birds fly out of the light and have an opportunity to escape from their imprisonment in this light. We have a lights out program where buildings around the city turn up their lights between September and November when birds are migrating through because it just is a really disorienting thing, especially again like if there was actually a low cloud ceiling, which there isn't really one tonight, so um, that may bode well for them um, just sort of navigating through. But if there's a low cloud ceiling and they actually can't see their visual cues that they normally get, so then if they're under the cloud ceiling and the, they see these lights, then they're going to actually, their brain will actually think that those are navigational cues, and that's where it gets confusing, you know, because if they're used to the, keeping the moon in a certain place, and they're in a place where there's, there's light that's sort of surrounding them, it can just cause them to, that's why they're caused to go in circles, and again, it doesn't necessarily even have to be the light, the lights themselves, it can just be the building's lights. But I would imagine these lights would be different because they are shining so brightly directly into their eyes. So it could potentially that they would just get beyond disoriented, that they would get a little bit of blindness from that as well. Roughly every 20 minutes, notes are kept about how many birds are seen, what type of weather pattern we have, and just the general environmental circumstances. If we could, we tried to determine what types of birds they were, although that was very difficult because the birds were rather far away and they were so reflective in the light that you couldn't tell what their basic coloring was except for flashes of yellow or red. There's a whole set of buildings around the city that we monitor for bird collisions. And those collisions can happen, again, because there's light involved at night or during the day if those buildings are near um, habitat and they're highly reflective birds will, because they're here and they need to actually refuel and build back up the energy and fat stores before they head off, they will forage quite heavily in, in scraps of habitat and then if they see what they think is another scrap of habitat, they'll fly directly to it and if it's actually just a highly reflective building, they'll, they'll run into it. So we monitor buildings from southern, um, from lower Manhattan up through Central Park and in other boroughs as well in Queens and Brooklyn for bird collisions.